everybody and welcome back to the channel. Recently I was watching another YouTuber's video called James Popsy and he has some really great stuff, some really great videos and quite a good or large following. So I trust what he says most of the time. Um, but in his last video he was talking about the importance of a photograph and the fact that it can be really important to you might not, not, might not necessarily be important to somebody else. So I can take the effort of going up into a mountain and force myself to get a really great shot. But I come home, I post it, and it doesn't really get the response I was hoping for. But yet I can just walk out the door, take a photo of a little leaf, and get a really great response on that. So yeah, I'll link uh, his video just so you can see what he was talking about. But it just kind of got me thinking of how important um, certain types of photography is and what I should really be focusing on and I'm the kind of person that really likes tech sharp photos I like my photos to be really sharp and that's something I really look at all the time I can go through my photos and if it's slightly out of focus I won't use it because I just want it to be sharp so it got me into this position of well do I really need to think about that and I need to think a little bit more maybe on the artistic side and stop focusing so much on getting the shot that I think is the best because for me that's a personal choice. I think that photo is great for me and yes either way no matter what photo I take it's going to be a photo I've taken and it's going to be personal choice either way but I need to stop thinking that the best and the greatest is the best and the greatest really. So I ended up getting a lens called the Lens Baby Velvet 85mm. It's a f1.8 lens and this is kind of a really special lens. It's designed to have that old feel like you get from a vintage lens. So when you have it all the way wide open, it just has this really weird effect and things are not sharp. It has this really hazy, strange look to it. And for me, for somebody who really likes sharp images, it's, it's kind of scary to use because I'm not getting sharp shots and you kind of have to see the artistic side of it and make the most of it. So that's what I'm coming out to do today. I'm going to, there's some little waterfalls just close by that I'm going to go to and see if I can get some shots using this and trying to add some motion in the water as well. So I'll end up putting a ND filter on this as well. And I recently also took some photos of my fiance for her maternity photos. So I'll add that into the end of this video as well, just to kind of showcase pretty much what this lens really is made for and that's portraits but I also want to use it out in nature I think most lenses can be used for every side of photography you just know, need to know how to use it first little location here. Not exactly sure this is going to work just because of the way the light is here. It's quite shaded in front of me and then there's like a harsh hitting light at the back where the sun is hitting directly on the water. So even for me, just with my eyes, it's completely blown out. So in this specific situation it might not be that great. Um, I'll just quickly show you what it looks like on video. And you can see that it's this really like hazy effect that this lens is giving. If I do drop down, it will change and things do become sharper. So if I go up to around f8, you're getting that nice crisp sharpness. But this lens was designed to use it um, a little bit more artistically. But in certain situations, putting the aperture up does work quite well. So I'm going to test a little bit wide open first. I have it actually... Uh, yeah, I have it at f1.8 and I have my shutter speed down at 1 30th of a second. I also have a ND filter on. This is only an ND8 so I wish I actually had something stronger to put on here because that would have helped quite a lot. Um, but I'll make do. I put my ISO down to 50 which will allow it to be a little bit darker as well. So I'm going to take a couple of shots of this and then I'll probably move on to a different area. But uh, it's worth a try and it might come out good. Um, sometimes the editing process can actually make it just that little bit better. So let me see what I can do and um, see how the shot comes out. I'm just 
just a little bit down further from where I was. Uh, so basically down the next ledge of these little waterfalls. And uh, I just want to talk about something I noticed with the last photos I took. And using peaking on a lens like this is just really unreliable. I can see that it's in focus according to the peaking settings. And once I've taken the photo, the area I actually focused on isn't exactly focused. So what I've had to do in the end is actually use the magnifying button to focus in or zoom in exactly where I'm focusing and then manually focus without the peaking on just so I get it accurate. Yes, of course, like I explained, this lens is a little bit unique and things become a little bit blown out and the sharpness isn't exactly there anyway. But I still want it to be in focus in the right place just so I know it's correct, at least as correct as I can possibly get it. So right now I'm in a little better spot where it's more shade on the water so it's not being blown out which really really helps so I'm hoping to get a little bit of a better shot here which this will also mean I can actually shoot at a low shutter speed with it being a little bit darker down here so that way I can get a little bit more of the moving water which is really nice to have I'm shooting at around 1 50th of a second now and I'm gonna zoom in with a magnifier just to make sure I get the focus accurate as this does really help and I've got it on five second timer not entirely sure the composition is correct yet so what I like to do is just keep, take a couple of test shots just to see how it looks that way I can kind of keep track on my photos making sure I'm getting the best results it's such a strange effect it gives and what I will do is every time I show the photos I will give a um, photo with a higher aperture so preferably around f8 which will also mean I can actually drop the speed even lower to get that nice fluffy feeling from the water which is really good to have is sponsored by Luminar AI and it's a great piece of software to use for editing photos just to get that little extra touch you can make it so that it's an addition to using Lightroom or Photoshop so you can just go to uh, edit in and open Luminar AI and within that you can change so many different things there's things different features for portraits for landscapes and all kinds of ways to edit and it almost feels like a bit of cheating sometimes but it just adds a little extra to a photo that you might not have gotten otherwise or you needed some other gear to make it work. So having a piece of software like that really does help. So I suggest you go check it out at the link below and it'll be really great if you could take a look. So I just moved myself a little bit to the left here that's the waterfall part I was taking a photo of um, but there's another one just there that I'm taking a photo of now within portrait um, yeah, portrait orientation so kind of nice when I don't have to go that far just to get a completely different shot but uh, it's definitely a really unusual lens to use and trying to get the focus correct one thing I've really noticed that the center of the lens is where the sharpness is. So you get kind of, even, even around f16, which is the max it goes up to, just the center part is in focus, or at least that's where the main area is of your focus. And towards at the out, outer edges of that, it just becomes really blurry. So it doesn't matter if I'm using a higher aperture or not, because those edges are blurry either way. And it's kind of it creates this really magical or interesting look to the image, almost kind of mystical. And especially in a place like this, some people probably say it has this kind of fairy 
a slight fairy effect to it. But the images are coming quite nicely out. Um, as I said, I didn't want to make a really big video out of this. It's just something I wanted to test out. And so far, I really enjoyed it for taking photos of my fiance. And it has been nice for getting a couple of almost macro shots, getting close-ups of different leaves and just playing around with it. So what I will do at the end of the video is include all other photos I've taken of it with it recently, including my fiance, just to showcase what kind of images you get with a lens like this. But uh, I just wanted to make this video today just to kind of put myself out there into, I guess, an uncomfortable position because I love getting sharp photos. And in one way, because the images aren't exactly sharp, I'm not taking as much effort into making sure everything is crisp and detailed and more or less actually just enjoying the environment. I'm enjoying being here and just taking fun photos. And I think it's really important to do that from time to time is just go out, take photos, enjoy it, and not worry too much about getting the best shot and sharing that with everybody because sometimes what you think is best shot isn't actually everyone's favorite. So go out, enjoy taking random photos and yes, when you get that chance, when you get the chance to climb up a really beautiful mountain with a sunset and whatever you can, then make the most of that. Get those shots and all I'm saying is just try not to focus too much on what other people think. So not everyone is going to like those photos, but it's a memory for you. You went and put yourself into that position of getting up there and whatever it is really. I mean, even wildlife, you've taken that time to get those shots and not everyone notices that. Not everyone in your audience will understand the effort you put in. So just remember that for yourself and remember the story you can make out of your images. But anyway, that was it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this little episode that I made and uh, I'll catch you all in the next one.